Hey, what's up guys? So let's talk about band segmentation on KA band and specifically uh, the answer to a question that a lot of you guys have been asking uh, for quite a while and especially more recently. Uh, it's basically, hey, I live or drive in blank. Uh, how should I set up my detector in terms of band segmentation? What segments should I run? Uh, normally, you're gonna wanna just run 258, but maybe you'll wanna enable some additional segments. How do you know? What should you do? Um, well, on RDF, uh, I've actually been doing a lot of discussion with this and kind of compiling what people are seeing from all over the country and putting it into one centralized place. So whether you drive in New York or Washington or Colorado or Florida or whatever state that you're in, you can just take a look there and see, okay, do I need just a standard 258 or should I run some additional segments for maybe out of tune guns? What are people seeing in my area? Uh, and the link for that will be down in the video description. So go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, for any of you guys who are familiar with things that aren't on the list yet, let me know so that I can add it to the list and because this really is a community effort. I can't, you know, drive everywhere across the whole country, right? This is really a group effort. So that's a great resource for you guys. Now, when we talk about band segmentation, it is kind of an advanced feature because you do run the risk of if you set it up incorrectly, um, yes, while you're improving the performance of the detector, you run the risk of it just not alerting you to police radar. And really kind of the, the goal of what you're wanting to do here is to improve the performance of the detector by telling it not to bother wasting time sweeping for any unnecessary frequencies. And doing that, it's gonna make the detector faster because it's really hyper-focused on just the frequencies that you want. And it also is gonna give you longer range to go along with the better performance. So it's a great boost in performance. Now, uh, this was actually more effective we were finding with some of the older detectors like the Valentine 1 or the Escort Redline. Uh, those were older analog detectors and the way those were designed, they actually took a little while to sweep through the entire range of KA band frequencies. And so uh, if you start you know, chopping away a lot of the sections of it, it really speeds things up quite a bit. And we were seeing a pretty big improvement performant, to performance. And so it's been something that's really popular to be added to a lot of detectors even that may not necessarily need it. Like the Redensos, for example, they were really fast. Uh, and they've got band segmentation, but that's just for filtering. It doesn't actually impact performance because the detector is already pretty fast. And it was just kind of, well, people want it. And so, me too, I've got the feature, you know? Uh, Escort, with their Max Series detectors, they're actually saying we don't even need band segmentation because while the detectors can sweep the entire range of KA band frequencies so quickly, that there's not really a boost of performance to doing it. And I actually like this better because uh, I've always figured BSRDR is kind of a hack. You're basically saying, hey, don't scan certain frequencies because you're too slow to do it otherwise and give me perf better performance that way. I would prefer having a detector that sweeps really fast on the entire range of frequencies and then I don't have to bother about, you know, out of tune guns or off frequency stalker ATRs or what if I drive to a new state? Do I need to look up other segments to run? You know, it's nice just to say, okay, scan everything and do it quickly. And I really like this approach. So um, with some of the newer detectors that we're seeing, the digital ones, one of the nice benefits is, well, they're able to scan a lot of radar frequencies, a much bigger range of frequencies, a lot faster, so they're not reliant on band segmentation to a degree. Uh, the Uniden is a good example of this. It's able to scan, you know, the R1 and the R3, entire range of frequencies really quickly. Now, we were given band segmentation because it was a very popular requested feature, and yes, we are seeing an improvement to performance uh, with, you know, band segmentation. I keep wanting to say BSRDR, a little bit different in Uniden land, but... BSRDR, whatever. So we're seeing some improvements to performance, but it's not this huge drastic improvement like what we saw with some of the older and slower detectors. And so we can get into the band segmentation and I mean, even the start of the video, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in just a second. Yeah, you can definitely enable some different segments, but it may not be as dramatic of a performance boost is what we saw before. Um, but for those of you guys who really want to, you know, get the last 10 tenths of performance out of your detector, what do you run? Well, again, the general idea is across the country, um, there's only four brands of police radar guns that operate on KA. You've got MPH, which transmits around 33.8, Stalker, which transmits around 34.7, and then Decatur and Custom Signals, which transmit around 35.5. Usually those guns are designed to transmit plus minus 100 megahertz or so. Um, if they're outside of that range, we call them out of tune because they're designed to be in tune within a certain range, but sometimes they will happen to drift out of tune more than others. Stalkers, for whatever reason, seem to drift out of tune more than other brands. Like I see a lot of MPH guns here and those tend to be plus minus 30-ish megahertz. You know, we've seen stalkers that are plus minus 80, 100. Some are people are reporting 200 megahertz off in rare instances, but it does seem to be more prevalent with stalkers for whatever reason. So people will be like, hey, instead of scanning for just 
plus minus 100, I may want to expand the range of frequencies, right? And that's really what uh, this whole thing about band segmentation is all about. If I enable one additional segment, it'll cover me against out-of-tune guns, but then how much of a performance hit is there? Not really that much. So a lot of times it may be a good idea to enable some additional segments just in case for out-of-tune guns. And so what people have been doing is saying, hey, I'm driving around what frequencies am I seeing? Uh, and is there anything that's out of tune? I should report that and make sure my detector is scanning for it, right? So that's what the compilation is uh, that I'm linking to you guys on RDF. It's basically people saying, hey, I've noticed I need some additional segments because of out of tune stalkers, because of something along those lines. Here in Washington, uh, in, down in Pierce County, uh, there's a Leo who's got a stalker ATR. Um, and it transmits around 35.2 or so, which is actually segment uh, seven. So when I'm driving down there, I'll actually enable segment seven. That's extremely rare. Those guns are almost completely gone and we could do a lot of discussion on off frequency ATRs and stuff. The guns are almost completely phased out, but there is some old inventory before Stalker settled on 34.7 that's still being used in different frequencies. So that's what that's all about. But anyway, uh, for those of you guys wondering if you need any additional segments, Simple answer, just take a look at the link in the video description and that's where we're compiling all the information. Uh, again, typically it's you just need two, five, and eight, but in some states uh, it is recommended because there are still some police officers who are using guns that uh, transmit at frequencies outside of those ranges. So you may want to enable segment four or segment six, you know, just on the outside of segment five, for example. Uh, maybe you'll need segment seven or segment whatever, like all that kind of stuff. They're kind of exceptions to the rule and I know not everybody wants to say, Okay, well, I get this is good for most of the country, but what if I'm an exception to the rule? I want to know, right? So here you go. Take a look at the link in the video description, and it covers all that kind of stuff for you. And that's really what this is about. And uh, yeah, anyway, for those of you guys wondering uh, what segments do I enable or disable on my detector if I live in blank, go take a look on the website. It's now available for you, and uh, that is going to be updated over time as uh, we get more information coming in for more states uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, if you find something interesting and you found it's a legitimate alert and not a false alert, I mean, you will get false alerts sometimes on KA band. And that's one of the nice things about band segmentation is, well, you're actually disabling the frequencies where you'll see only false alerts. But if you're seeing legitimate police radar frequencies uh, on any of these segments, especially anything other than two, five and eight, definitely let us know uh, on that thread on RDF, we can update the kind of the main post accordingly and then we've got a nice centralized resource for everybody so awesome thanks so much for watching i hope this helps you guys let me know if you have any questions or if you have something to contribute to that site as well other than that yeah happy driving and i'll see you guys in the next video